Hello, today I'm going to show you how to sell music on the Unreal Marketplace. Now, it's not as simple as you think it is, sadly, but first, before we actually get into the nitty gritty details and walking you through each step, a couple of warnings. Unreal Engine is a very heavy piece of software. I think you're going to need at least uh, 70 to 100 gigabytes free on your actual computer to download Unreal Engine itself. And then when you're opening it, expect it to take a while, especially that first time, because it's gonna load a lot of shaders and other little bits and bobs, which you don't actually need, especially if you're writing music and you're just selling music on Unreal Marketplace. But it is a heavy piece of software and it can put a lot of people off, but it is well worth it. They're a great company to sell music with. And I think they give you is it, I think it's 70% uh, of the income and it doesn't cost to actually sell on there. They just take, I think it's like 30%, which is very small comparatively, but I'll double check that in a bit. So what are we actually gonna be talking about? First, we're gonna be looking at the files itself. So you've already written your music. I would always recommend an album. Don't do individual tracks, they'll just reject you. So make sure you've got at least some sort of album together, half an hour to an hour of music. Secondly, naming the files. There's a certain way you need to name it because they don't like spaces in the software. Thirdly, creating demos. You're gonna want demos for people to listen to. Otherwise, they're gonna be like, well, why do I wanna buy this? I don't know what it actually is. So you need to create demos. There's several ways of doing it. Uh, I've done it in the past on my website, or you can do it on YouTube, which is pretty easy. I'll show you both. Four, we're actually gonna jump into Unreal Engine and show you how to actually organize your files within it. You have to create queues, and you'll see what I mean when we get there. And there's a little bit of naming and little bits and bobs to do in there. The more tracks you have, the longer this is gonna take. After that, we're actually going to go into Unreal Marketplace on the internet and look at metadata, where I create my images, and what to put, what not to put, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, I'll cover just some little bits and bobs about submitting and that actual process itself. So let's just jump straight in and look at the filing system. So this is the actual marketplace. We're not gonna be wanting that for a while. This is what we want to be looking at right now. So be organized. Honestly, it will pay to be organized. You can see here, I've got my music projects where I actually write my tracks. We have my final tracks here. And then you'll notice this 44.1 at the top here. And it's already labeled. I've pre-done a lot of this. Otherwise, this video will be extremely long and cut and start. So I thought I'll pre-make everything and then just show you how I did it. Now, if you're composing in 48 kilohertz with 24 bit, do not do that. They don't like it. You need to uh, transfer it over or export it in 44.1. Don't worry if you've already got the 48. You'll notice I always do it in 48, 24 down here. And an easy, easy peasy way of actually just translating it into 44.1 is through Reaper. So this piece of software right here, there's a really cool feature that if you go up, click File, and it's Batch File Item Converter. You have this beautiful little thing right here. And what I will normally do is go in and grab those files, drop them into Reaper right here, and you can directory, pick where it goes, press browse, select a specific folder, and then sample rate, you wanna drop it down to 44.1, and down here even further, you've got 16 bit. So that's an easy way of converting it, because I use this music for other things, so I like it at 48. Or you can just export them as you're composing it with 44, whichever. That's how I export it using Reaper. This is the website to download the amazing software. It's free to evaluate, um, and I guess it's indefinite for evaluating, but especially if you're using for a while, it is well worth purchasing. Uh, it's a great little piece of software. So that's Reaper, and that's how you get your files. You want them in 44.1. Next, the whole naming. As I mentioned before, they don't like spaces, so you've gotta have these little dashes where spaces are, or just have nothing there at all, and this WAV. How do we do this easily and quickly without having to do every single one? Well, select everything, right click if you're on a Mac, and go to rename. And you'll see this little pop-up here, and there's different things you can do. You can replace text, which is where I'll just put a space and a dash uh, for replacing stuff there, or add text, and I will put this wave dash, so everything at the beginning will have that really easy way to rename stuff and well worth doing, especially if you've got hundreds of tracks. I know I do some really big libraries uh, with two, 300 tracks, 
so useful. So now that your tracks have no spaces and they have the WAV bit at the beginning, they should be now ready to go into Unreal Engine. Uh, you'll want to create some demos. Now, how I've done this is several ways to do it. One is your own little website. I've made some little bits and bobs here where you can see this 235 library. These are the different bits within it. You can click on that and you can listen to snippets or bits of the library uh, within it so people can actually look at individual tracks. Another way to do it is YouTube. Like for example, the one I'm doing right now and kind of showing you with, which is ambient isolation. I just shoved it all together in a one hour video back to back created chapter markings so they can skip between tracks. I've put just a little looped video on in the background so you've got something to kind of look at if people are watching. And so there'll be a link to this in the description of the actual product and they can go in and look at all the tracks. So there's two ways of doing it. Make sure you watermark your music. Even just record yourself saying demo and put that on repeat every 10, 20, 30 seconds, however long you feel, depending on the music as well. Because what's stopping them just going in and then just ripping that off of YouTube or ripping that off of whatever and using that instead of purchasing it. So always watermark your work, very important. So YouTube, own website, I'm sure there's other ways, SoundCloud, whatever, just make sure you have demos. So. Demos are made, we've got our tracks, and now we need to go into Unreal Engine. So when you open up Unreal Engine for the first time, first you'll have this little launcher, I say little, this is the launcher right here with different versions. Currently it's 5.1. Uh, as I said, it is quite big if we look at, how do I select it, libraries? Yeah, you can see 47 gigabytes this one is, and you'll see different updates and there's different versions. Always use the most up-to-date. We can see my project already here. If we are launching it for the first time, I'll walk you through that. This is how it will look. You're going to want, generally I just select game and blank. And then don't worry about this, quality presets. I always go scalable, hopefully. Name your project, again, you can't have spaces. So I'm just gonna put ambient isolation. You'll see that if I have a space, it will create an error saying project name may contain a space and that's how you create it there. So I'm just gonna cancel that because then it will just open up a blank version of this right here. The first thing you're gonna do when you get in here and open this up, don't worry too much about everything. What we actually have to do as composers isn't much at all, it's very simple. But firstly, within content you're wanting to create just a mass folder for all your music. This one is specifically Ambient Isolation album, so I've got an Ambient Isolation folder. Within that you'll need two folders, cues and WAVs. Now this is why we called our stuff WAV beforehand. Quite literally, all you're gonna do is go to your files, all those ones you've already got, you're gonna drag those and literally just drop it in here. And it will all load, drop it in the WAV folder. And then after that, you're gonna select all of them, right click and then create multiple queues. Don't click single queue because it will create one queue out of everything multiple. And then that will produce a load of blue files. You can see these are purple. Uh, listed queue. You can see I've already moved them here. It says sound queue at the back there, bracket sound queue, while the WAV is bracket sound wave. The annoying thing, you can see these are blue, once you've dragged them and dropped them in the queue folder, is you have to rename them. These don't automatically go queue, dash, celestial, horns, etc. You have to rename it. So F2 or right click, rename and then just change that little bit at the beginning to instead of wav dash to q dash. And you've got to do that for every single one of the files you import. There's no quick way of doing it, sadly. You can't change and drop. Believe me, I've tried multiple things. If there's somebody out there who knows a quicker way of doing it, let me know. But honestly, it's annoying. You just have to do it, especially when I had to do it for 243 tracks. You just have to change them all to q. Um, and this is why you put it to wav beforehand in the folder system, otherwise you can have to name all these WAV beforehand. This is just how Unreal Engine like it, uh, but make sure you have Q and WAV, otherwise they will reject you. So once this is all done, and they're named, and they're in, you can go into more detail and make them loopable, etc. But if I'm honest, I kind of let them do that themselves if they want to loop the track. So I, I tend to just kind of leave it at that. You can just click play there and listen to make sure it's all working. Uh, and you can see the waveforms in there as well. So that's everything you need to do. You need to save that. And now this is where a little bit of fun and 
bits and bobs that can go messy quite easily happen. So back into our filing system. And again, this is another reason why you need to be organized. So we're done with that, we're done with the tracks. Now we're gonna go into the Unreal Engine programs themselves. You'll notice I've got three there because I've already done bits and bobs. So this is the one that we're actually going to export. While this is the one unedited. You'll notice there's quite a difference between the two folders. There's a lot more in this one, while there's not a lot in this one. That's because there's a load of stuff we have to delete. Uh, and so the only things you really need to keep is, of course, the project itself within config. Keep everything in config. Keep the layout. I know there's nothing in there. Don't touch that. Within content, you just want there to be your project, the one that you're selling, just the one folder. So you can see we have our queues in our queue folder, our WAVs in our WAV folder. And so that's all there, and that's everything you actually need. The rest of it, so the save, the intermediate, the derived data, and then the collections and the developer stuff, delete all of that, literally get rid of it, you don't need it. The only things you need are these three items at the top, everything within the config, and then content, just your project. Delete everything else. And then once you've done that, you're gonna zip it, quite literally, right click, and then compress it. And then of course you'll have this folder here. Um, name them as well, I tend to name it uh, version one because sometimes they will come back with some feedback and you've accidentally not deleted something or there's other bits and bobs that they require you to do. They're really good with that, but we'll get into that in a second. So you've got your zip. Next, jumping into the internet, uh, you can use whatever you like, but I personally use Google Drive drop it into Google Drive, we can see the folder is there. And now we are ready to go onto the website itself and start entering metadata. So publish a portal, add a product. I will go to a draft that I'm already in the middle of and we'll edit that. So you'll first start off here and they'll ask for some images. Of course, a title, a price tag, category, music. You'll note here it says, all WAV files must each have an accompanying Q file. That's where that comes from. Uh, tags, uh, a short description, a longer description, which I still keep short and it's where I put my demo link there. Uh, technical information, I just kind of put the track list. This is where it asks what's your sample rate and it specifically asks for 44.1 and 16 bit, music loopable, how much music is there, um, additional documentation, etc, etc. Where do I actually create my images? You'll note that they're asking for three different types with three different exact pixels. I think the thumbnail is 284 by 284. I love Canva. Uh, if not, if you've got Photoshop, even better. That's what I use currently. But what I used to use was the free version of Canva. It's really easy. You get some great photos and bits and bobs you can drop in. As you can see there, I stole one there for the isolation. Um, how many web files I'm putting, how much music, keep it simple, to the point, and then just create three different sizes, download them. That's where this next folder comes in really handy, the metadata, where you can see I've got my images, I've also got the demo stuff there as well, which I created. So upload your images, have a bit of fun, mess around. Remember, this is the selling point of your product. Uh, of course, the music is great, but if, you, if you're not got a good image, if you're not a good selling point, nobody's gonna wanna buy it, sadly. Uh, so make sure all that information is in there. Finally, we're gonna go to the bottom, uh, project version, create a new one. This is where you've got the project name, I put V1. This is where the link, you have to put a shareable link from your Google Drive, OneDrive, whatever you're using here. Versions, this is specifically 5.1 we are using. Platforms, generally with music, it works on all platforms, so tick it all, um, we don't have to worry too much about that. Version notes, any information you wanna tell the developers really, or example, if you're updating it, um, maybe you know, you've know you already listed it, but you wanna add a couple tracks, just add added a couple tracks there, and then date. You can preview it, so if you click preview, this is how it will look in the marketplace. Of course, the link there, technical information, tags, etc. So you can see how it will look. And then, of course, you're gonna hit the big submit for approval button right there afterwards. So what happens when you hit that button? You'll get an automated email saying it's been submitted, yada, yada. Now, they're really, really good at getting back to you. Normally, it's two to three days. I find that they'll email back saying yes, 
uh, we're starting to look at it, then you'll get another one saying it's approved. If not, you'll get an email with some notes. So here is an example of when I've had to get notes. They'll put your product uh, now has a status of change needed and they will give you this beautiful little thing you can double click on and open up a separate document. This is what I love about Unreal Engine. They're really nice uh, and they give you really concise information. So here you can see where it's passed and what's wrong and they'll be here saying there must be a pack folder under the content folder that is named. So they're really good at giving you notes and exactly where it's failed and so what you gotta do is go in, update that, resubmit it and then it will be up and available for sale. So you can see here is the breakdown and how they like to do it. Um, I really like that about Unreal Engine, the fact that they're really specific, they don't just go, oh, it's been denied. They will give you a reason why, and they're generally really quick to respond and then respond again when you resubmit it. You're not waiting months, it's quite literally days. Most of the time, if I'm honest, it's next day. They're great and honest, and if you have any questions, you reply and they'll get back to you, it's a real person, which is really nice, and you can tell a real person did this as well, and they actually take the time to look through, make sure everything is good. So I think that is everything. I know we've flown by it, but you can watch through this video a couple times. Um, it's well worth selling with these guys. They're really, really good, um, especially for beginners starting out. They're algorithms are really nice. So when you do submit something, it will go to the front page. If somebody clicks on music in the marketplace, it'll be right there on the front page before people tend to, you know, put in search or look around for different things. So it will be on the front page until, you know, it's driven out by other products, but generally they only release a couple a day, I feel, musically wise. Um, and so you get a bit of front page for a while and then they do monthly sales, which they'll generally send you an email about. You can put a product on sale, I love Black Friday, you can put everything on sale. Generally, it's just one product at 50%. Um, they do monthly, but a really good little company. I make quite a bit of money actually off of them doing this. The actual share split, as you can actually see on the screen, I'm showing you a bit of the behind the scenes of payout reports, is actually 88% you keep. So they only get 12%. I was wrong in the beginning where I said 70, and hopefully I put a little image there saying, no, it's actually 88. Where else can you get 88% unless you're selling yourself? So they only take 12%, which is nothing in all honesty compared to other sites. So well worth going with. Uh, I love selling with them. Um, but I hope this has been helpful. I hope that's walked you through the process. If you have any problems, let me know. If you have any problems actually with opening Unreal Engine 5, just Google it. I'm serious, the forums are great. They're really helpful and even the people themselves. But generally, I'm not gonna lie, half the time it's just you need to wait. I think it took two hours for my computer to initiate 5.1 um, and I'm using you know a MacBook Pro with an i9 8 core with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So. Make sure you got a souped up computer, if anything. Um, but thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped, and I will see you in the next video.